All right, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Do you have to do this? To, Just to, to calm to myself. Call, yeah, is that really? You do that? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Chad and Max, and we're here today having another conversation in autism. And uh, we hope that these conversations benefit you. Um, and the funny thing about them is that as we've done these uh, together, it actually benefits our relationship as well. And so uh, today's topic is tough love. Now, in the world of autism and the world of special needs, uh, tough love is rarely talked about, I feel like. Um, we sort of cater to needs uh, first and foremost um, and figure out how to love each other in the midst of those needs. Uh, in our family, we do things a little bit different. And uh, we do a lot of the tough love route, don't we, bud? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have some big fights, don't we? Uh-huh. We have some big blow-ups, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Max has agreed to talk candidly about uh, some of the challenges and <clears throat> some of our situations and how we've overcome them. Um, and so we're just going to jump right into it. Buddy, what, first off, what are some of the things that you love to do? Well, I love to ride chairlifts most of the time. And also I love riding water slides and playing football and skiing around the state. And I also really like jumping on trampolines. Okay, so as you mentioned those things, I recall you and I <laughs> having a fight around pretty much every one of those things at some point or another where um, you've gotten really upset and <laughs> I've gotten, I've kind of played the tough love, the tough dad approach and we've worked through them. Um, what do you think it is that upsets you? When you're doing something that you really love, all of a sudden I, I've watched you switch gears and uh, it's just too much to take and you're done and you and you start to melt down what what happens there can do you understand uh, what happens is there something that scares you or how what happens? Uh, just like if something this happens quickly and then I'm like uh oh I'm, I'm like and then I melt down and it's just what do you mean happens quickly? Like something startles you or Yeah, is something it, is tries it... to startle me when something like stops, like a chairlift or like for example, if a chairlift if I'm on a chairlift, ski lift, and if I'm riding it up and all of a sudden it stops, then there goes my attitude and I start to think that the chair will never start again and and then it makes me nervous and so, so, so it's something that you're fearful that maybe when the chair stops, it's not going to start again and we're going to be stuck. Is that, yeah. what you, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. So I don't, and I feel like I won't, and I feel like I'm going to go home too. What happened last time uh, that happened? Remember? Yeah, I it was remember. was just last weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. It was right. you and me. Uh, and a couple other people and mm. it didn't go well. Do you nope. remember screaming at me the entire way down one of the runs? Yeah. Because why? Because of the chairlift. But, but why were you screaming at me? Because I couldn't take it up I know. there. I made you keep going though. Yeah, I, want, I did not really want to ski. I just wanted to get off the mountain, but I kept going. You kept going because I'm, I forced it, and this is where we're to, well, this is what we're talking about with the tough love part is, I uh, I made Max keep going, and I wasn't going to uh, cater to uh, the fear and uh, the meltdown, and 
Max, you and I have been doing this for 13 years. Yeah. And moms and dads out there, well, you're 13. Yeah. I haven't been dealing with that for 13 years. I've been, we've been together for 13 years. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> some moms and dads out there will, would have probably bailed on the scheme. Where they would have quit, they would have taken, uh, they would have gone in and been done. Um, but Max, I know you. I know you really, really well. And I knew that if we pushed through 10 or 15 minutes of a really bad moment in your attitude and got past it, maybe get a little food in your belly. Yeah, because whenever I'm mad, sometimes I feel like I need some food. Yeah. That is very true. Or sleep. Yeah. And so I went ahead and persevered through that. We had people with us that hadn't experienced this before. And <laughs> they got to see you screaming at me the entire way down the ski hill. But we had a pretty good talk. The very next chair ride up, we were on a chair called Hidden Valley. It's one of your favorites. Yeah. You'd just gotten really upset with it because it oh, had stopped. But you and I had a talk. I kind of liked it when I stopped, but all of a sudden I was like, uh-oh, I forgot about the stopping, and, and then I, that's, I wanted to bail on it. Yeah. But we had a great talk so on, the, on the next chair ride up. You and I had a pretty good talk. So, yeah. and, and remember, we, we thought about those times where we saw s somebody stumble getting on the chairlift at the bottom or, and they have to stop it, I right? Saw, I, saw, I saw a couple people struggle getting on the chair. And so you know that they stop it for a reason and it's not breaking down. It's that they have to help people get on the chair if somebody had a bobble or something, right? Mm -hmm. So Max and I had a really good talk on the way up the chair. <sighs> and uh, what are you going to say? Oh, nothing. I was okay. just yawning. <laughs> Just sit up straight, bud. Um, we had a really good talk on the way up the next chair. And we talked about the people that sometimes stumble when they're getting on the chair and that they have to stop. And I saw in your head, I could see the switch. And you went, yeah, yes. What do, you, do you remember what you told me? You said that you were wrong. And that you didn't mean what you said about never wanting to ski again. No, and it was not true at all. Yeah. I was, I was just, you know, it was just a really bad moment. It was. But guess what? Instead of quitting and going in, we stayed out and we stuck with it. And you were really, really mad at me. Screaming and crying and saying you were never going to ski again. <laughs> But I've been down this road with you so many times that I knew that if we just stuck with it, got a little food in your belly, had a good talk on the next chair, you would change your attitude. So I think in our case, and every family is different, and every family is going to have a different situation, and they're going to grow into knowing when to quit and when to persevere in in bad circumstances uh, and we've just been doing it long enough to know and uh, but the point w that I'm trying to make is that we started out that way and we did go the tough love route for uh, a lot of Max's childhood and I think we are where we're at today with our ability to talk about autism, our ability to work through problems, because we persevered and we took, uh, we took the tough love approach. It's not the only time that that's happened, is it? <laughs> no. Remember Radiator Springs Racers in Disneyland? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I remember it all. Right. I wish I had filmed that blow up uh -oh. because... <laughs> You were doing like... Why would you want to film me for just freaking out on you? I, I don't, wouldn't ever do that. And I don't <laughs> ever encourage families to, to film their child freaking out. But <laughs> Why would you say that? I was, I, it was, I was kidding. 
Oh. I wish I wish that I could have filmed it and played <laughs> it back for you to watch years <laughs> later when when you n knew that you were okay. Yeah. After that gigantic like kicking and screaming <laughs> freak out that yeah. when I, after I told you that I was going to take you on Radiator mm -hmm. Springs Racers, what became your favorite ride in all of Disneyland? Uh, probably that. Yeah. But then a different ride came in. Yeah, as soon as you got older and you started going on like Matterhorn. Matterhorn yeah. became my favorite all the time. Just yeah. Like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it happens to us quite a bit. And we just got done with a two and a half week road trip where we went skiing through uh, four different home. states. And almost every morning, Max had, uh, and, and I think it was because there was change involved. And it was a new environment and new chairlifts and there's just the anxiety was kind of in the red and almost every day we had this situation and some days uh, we we did, we sort of gave up and we we kind of just said look it's it's okay today and but most days we powered through didn't we and mm -hmm. we forced it and a couple days I've been kind of happy though yeah there were a few days that you really enjoyed it, like when we skied Breckenridge, that's what's your favorite part. Yeah, so. but um, during the time, there was a couple bad spots, yeah. at least. One but the point time. is, uh, this family gets through it the hard way. We don't uh, cave, we don't, uh, we don't quit, and we go the tough love approach and it's what fits our family and we wouldn't uh, have the incredible adventures that we have had if we didn't just push and go the tough love route. You agree? Mm -hmm. I love you buddy. I love you too. You want to say goodbye to the nice people in YouTube world? Goodbye. See you guys later.